President Tinubu yesterday assigned portfolios to all 45 minister designates uh, whose nominations were recently confirmed by the Senate ahead of the inauguration on Monday. The assignment of appointees to their respective ministries marked a departure from the past when portfolios were given to ministers on the day of inauguration. The Office of the Secretary to the Government of the Federation confirmed on Monday uh, that it would be swearing in date for ministers, while the date for the ministerial retreat was yet to be fixed. In a list released by the top presidency official to newsmen at State House in Abuja, former governor of the Boy State, Senator David Umahi, was assigned to the Works Ministry as Minister of Works. Festus Kiamu was given Minister of Aviation and Aerospace Development. Former governor of Australian State, Adibuiga Uyitola, was given Minister of Transportation and Wale Edong was assigned to the Finance Ministry as Minister of Finance and Coordinating Minister of the Economy. Joining us tonight to discuss this is Ufomai Bamuna. He is the head of news at uh, Cool Wazobia Info here in Lagos. Um, also joining us is Osea Nelly. He's a chieftain of the People's Democratic Party. Thank you so much, gentlemen, for joining us and good evening. Glad to be here. Good evening. Good evening. It's good to be here. Great. Um, I'll start with you, Ufoma, because uh, obviously you're a news guy and um, when the list of names came out. Um, even before they were assigned portfolios, a, a lot of people um, had several reactions as to the names that made it to the list. Now, a few names, as we noticed, have all obviously not uh, made the list finally, the likes of El Rafai and some other people who the Senate um, was yet to um, ratify. But now we have seen these names and, of course, the offices that they uh, will be holding once they have been sworn in. Um, what do you think um, of these people? Because we've heard people make all kinds of, you know, um, statements about who should uh, handle what and who's a square peg in a round hole. But let's start with the key positions. What are your thoughts? Um, to be very honest with you, um, I don't know. I, to, to be honest, the the ministerial list. Uh, I wasn't surprised. Um, you know, first of all. Um, not also totally surprised with um, the portfolios that were assigned to the respective persons. And there are a couple of people we already knew, um, you know, what they were going to handle. Um, Ali Pati, for example, it was almost obvious that he was going to be the Minister of Health. Um, Bosun Tijani was almost obvious that um, he was going to handle um, digital economy. At least th those two were almost like a given. Um, I was a bit surprised with um I was a bit surprised with Dele Alake. Uh I thought he was shooing for um information minister. I was a bit surprised to see him in solid uh, minerals uh, development. Um I was taken aback a bit uh, when I saw the former River State Governor Isom Wiki as the minister for the federal capital territory. Um I thought he would have been Minister of Works, you know, he's quite famous, uh, you know, for uh, projects, you know, he uh, put up in, in River State. In fact, he nicknamed himself Mr. Project, you know, so I thought possibly he would be the Minister of um, Works. Um, but all in all, I, I think for me, barring a couple of names here and there, it's just a regular um, chronism, so to speak, you know, same politicians, just changing a few names here and there, same of the same. Um, you have an Atiku uh, um, Badaru who, goodness me, um, you would, some would say in the same society, in same climes, he should be somewhere in jail as we speak, but the man has gone from being a senator, you know, to a governor, and now he's a minister. But we all know his antecedents and how himself and the, and the late minister of, um, sorry, the late um, head of state, uh, Sani Abacha, you know, siphoned a lot of, lots of monies from the country. But again, like I said, I think it's just same of the same, barring a few names here and there. So let me come to you. Obviously, a member of the opposition, the People's Democratic Party, you have a lot to say, obviously, about some of these names uh, that have made the list. There are those who, in fact, I have had conversations over uh, months after the president was um, sworn in 
um, about the kinds of people who would make this list. And many had, you know, spoken to the fact that, oh, because of who the president was when he was a governor of um, Lagos State, he worked with technocrats, um, um, very interesting minds and people who had the best ideas. Uh, but looking at this list, can you really say that uh, of the president and the people who he's picked for these offices? I think he has uh, laid that myth to rest um, going into the campaign. And that was one of the things that uh, we, we they, they didn't um, let us uh, get away from, that one of the president's abilities was, you know, the ability to identify and headhunt the best of the best. And so there was, regardless of what you felt about him personally, you always felt that there would be some redemption in the cabinet that he put together. And I think when people saw the initial, oh, um, there was a lot of disappointment, I think, across uh, the nation and, and even across party lines, um, because I would have expected to see a, a lot more technocrats. Uh, off the top of my head, I can only think of maybe five, at best six candidates in a list of, an original list of 48. So not only do we have the largest ministerial list ever, but the president somehow managed to pick the worst of the worst of us. Um, and not only that, when he then decided to, to give them portfolios, um, he puts, you know, you couldn't have put uh, rounder pegs in square holes. Hmm. Why for instance? Yeah, go ahead. No, 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 go ahead. I'm just, I'm just listening. No, I'm saying, so why, for instance, would you have a Festus Keamo as Minister of Aviation, why would you have um, Badaru and Matawale as Ministers of Defence and Ministers of State of Defence, given that one of the problems Nigeria is facing is insecurity? Um, I saw the appointment of uh, Better Edu as Humanitarian Minister. Nigeria is one of the poorest nations in the world. We have the largest um, poor population in the world. And then you give a medical doctor who basically denied COVID existed and stood in the way of um, the NCDC of testing while she was commissioner of health in her state. You know, I, so it, it, it does worry me. I, I don't want to um, say it's all doom and gloom because there were some standouts um, for me as a PDP member. Uh, Ufoma has spoken about weekend antecedents in um, Port Harcourt in River State. I expect him to perform even better as um, a pseudo governor of FCT because that's what the <laughs> is. He 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 sort of exercises some sort of executive power. So um, I think he will do really well. I know he will go up against a lot of entrenched interests. He's the first Southern minister uh, in the FCT we're having for at least 46 or 47 years. So he will have to battle um, those interests when he gets into, into office. But I think he's more than capable. I have to mention... You, go ahead. I'm so sorry to talk over you. Do you think that the reason that, that maybe the president was very tactful about putting Rike there, because again... If we go back to um, the likes of El Rufai being the FCT minister and, you know, how daring he was back then under the Obasanjo administration, could this also be one of the reasons why Mr. President had to put a week there, knowing that he's one who, if for, for the want of a better way to describe him, is fearless? Um, I, I think that must, in, um, in part, be the reason why. Um if if you wanted to pick an individual who would go in like a bull in a china shop and you know transform the FCT, it would be Governor Wiki. Um, I think a lot of FCT individuals are, who have built you know without planning uh, are having sleepless nights now because you sort of expect <laughs> that we will go back to uh, strict fidelity and observance of the Abuja Master Plan. Um, mm. Another standout is Ambassador Tuga. He was ambassador to Germany. He's a true diplomat, a true gentleman. If we had him, if we had this cabinet in place, I don't think the, the, the missteps we saw Nigeria take with ECOWAS and Niger would have happened. I think he would have, our response would have been a little bit more considered. Um, 
Fag Bemi as, as attorney general was an obvious one. He's again is a very accomplished lawyer. And so okay. he, I, I don't expect to see the types of abuses you would, we saw with someone like Malami, uh, in, you know, from Fag Bemi. I, I think he has a reputation to observe. He sort of was a civil society activist on the side. So I don't expect to see, um, and, 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 I'm, and I'm caveating this being aware of what's happening with Emefele em, em, and Bauer, but I don't yeah. expect to see the Nigerian state crack down so hard and take away the rights of the average uh, Nigerians. Uh, Boson Chijani, I don't know how they managed to convince him to serve in this government, but he really was a steal. Um, he really has brought, I think, um, enthusiasm from the tech community and support for this government because of that singular um, appointment. Um, Ufama spoke about Pate. Uh, he's a brilliant guy. Wale Edun, as well as coordinating minister. I expect to see him sort of achieve what Ngozi Okonjo Iwela did because he does have um, the, uh, the ability to do so. But then, you know, I speak. I spoke about Boston, and I said you you could see the goodwill he brought from that community, and you know he will grow that digital economy. And politicians are not irrational creatures. Everything we do uh, has to have a reason. When I look at this cabinet, I don't see a cabinet put together to solve Nigeria's pressing economic security mm. problems. I see an election cabinet. I see a cabinet of politicians that sort of are on an election or a campaign footing. You have serving, uh, you have, I mean, governors, APC, um, former chairman and women leader and spokespeople and former senators. You, that's what com comprises the majority of the cabinet. And so, so you're saying uh, that. So you're saying that this is more of a reward cabinet. This is more it's, like it's, you work for either, me, and this is what I'm giving you in return. Either a reward cabinet or it's a cabinet that might be have been put together in preparation for a rerun or run. A run. But it doesn't, this is not a cabinet put together to solve Nigeria's pressing problems. Hmm. Interesting. Let me come back to you, former. I know that aside from you being um, the head of news um, for a radio station, you also are a sportsman. Let's talk about your um, constituency. <laughs> Um, My ex constituents. <laughs> you continuously are a sportsman. But let's talk about the guy who made it. Um, for cross variance, this is not necessarily a great feat, being that Senator Wanino has, you know, um, been in the Senate for a while. He's he's pushed for several interesting bills. He's a very, you know, smart and intelligent guy. But sports, many thought that he should have said no, but. Um, I don't know. Does it mean that maybe the sports ministry always gets the misses? Or I don't know exactly, because we can we really say that this is a win for the Ministry of Sports, knowing that we've had the likes of um, Dalong and um, what's the other guy's name? Very interesting guys so far. Um, what do you think about this? Sunday, Sunday Diary. Sunday Diary, yes. To, to be very honest with you, I think I saw a joke on Twitter. Um, someone said, or oh, wait, whenever it, it's time for these appointments, they divide everything. And then it's the last person, the remaining person <laughs> that doesn't get something that they hand over to sports. Um, I, th I thought Dalong was a disaster. Um, Sunday Dai came with, he might not have been a sports person, but he is someone who was quite intelligent and, you know, um, someone you thought could do better, but I thought Sonny Dye was also another disaster. Um, I, I'm, I'm, I'm not so excited, to be honest, with uh, I hope um, from proven wrong, you know, with um, John Eno's um, appointment. In fact, I think it was him on Twitter a few minutes ago, about 30 minutes ago, and I checked it out. He said, um, farmer and entrepreneur, uh, appointed um, <laughs> sports minister. <laughs> he he put that himself. You know, it just shows you the um, it shows you the irony, so to speak. Um, and the funny thing is that Nigerian sports, sadly, is the one 
one of the few things that sort of unites the country. You know, it's that one thing where when it's going on, nobody remembers that the uh, Yoruba, Igbo, Hausa, or that uh, Osa is from um, Edo and I'm Delta, even though we are both from the same old Bendel state, but now we are fighting each other, so to speak. You know, nobody remembers all, all of that, uh, but somehow we seem to not always get it right. Like I said, Dalong was a disaster. It was just causing confusion in almost all the sports federations. Sunday Diary came and even compounded um, the issues um so this will more like take him it will more like take him a while you know to want to get to understand the nitty-gritty of how technical sports can be what needs to be done all the infightings in the different sports federations honestly like i think it was the punch newspaper earlier today john who i think that was a headline <laughs> <that> they had <laughs> I love that. I love that headline, John Boo, because really, <laughs> I don't know. Again, we go back to the issue. We go back to the issue of square pegs in round holes. Now, I want to go to something that's very important to us all, which is really biting. Now, we're worried. Uh, we found our, ourselves in a fix here as a country um, because of one one statement that was made by the president that subsidy is gone. Let's talk about the petroleum ministry. Now, we know that the Minister of State for Petroleum is Heineken Lepogre. Now, we also know, as journalists and, of course, as politicians, as Nigerians, following up on this man, um, he has so many cases to answer, corruption cases, looting, unaccountability, et cetera, et cetera. And this might be detailed for a couple of people who've also made this list. But um, many are applauding that, oh, great, we now have somebody from the Niger Delta who is seating as Minister of State. Um, in the petroleum department, but nobody has really talked about who the petroleum minister is going to be. Okay. Well, the petroleum minister is the president. <laughs> Interesting. The petroleum uh, so, so, the petroleum so, so, so is the president picking up from his predecessor, as he said, because his predecessor I, I, was the petroleum minister? I think that's what's happening here. Uh, we don't need to be told officially before we know. Um, he's he's made two. He's he's sort of divided that ministry into two. So there's the petroleum resources. And then there's gas, you know, yeah. and there are two ministers of state. Oh, sorry, minister, how, how was it again? Minister, of, okay, my English failed me there. Minister but you get what I mean. You know, two uh, uh, junior ministers, that's the better word for me. Um, so the senior minister, obviously, going by the trend, you know, of what um, his predecessor did, is he himself um, the president. Um, but if we want to talk about the issues of corruption allegations, you know, hanging over um, the coverage neck, then there are a thousand and one, you know, figuratively now, uh, persons on that cabinet who have almost exactly the same um, kind of issue. The um, the former governor of, I think, Zamfara State, you know, we all know some of the allegations hanging over his neck. But he is, he has been confirmed as a minister. There are quite a number of others too, you know, who have all of those issues. But like you said, that's, it's a very critical sector that we honestly need to, um, I don't know how we're going to do it, but it needs to be sorted out. Mm. The whole subsidy issue, the whole talk about whether or not subsidies are going to come back when then there was a flat denial you know, yesterday's announcement from NMPC of a $3 billion loan from um, a bank. You know, so many questions that needs to be asked. Uh, one, one, of the, one of the explanations they gave to us was that um, it's going to be a fraction of, how did the NMPC put in that statement? A fraction of, um, um, I'm trying to remember the exact words they used, but what is the fraction? Is it 5%? Is it 10%? Is it 60%? We absolutely have no idea. Too many questions, you know, um, in that ministry. The spokesperson of the president talked about how, oh, even if we have all the refineries working, it's not going to really reduce uh, uh, the, the price of petrol. Is it? Um, why, why, are we, why have we over the years continuously imported petrol um, into the country when we've spent millions of dollars to do turnaround maintenances on our our refineries, and then almost everybody is hoping on Dangote's refinery. Who, let's not also forget, we were told when it was inaugurated in May, you know, that it was going to start this 
late last month or this month, you know, August is, we're in the middle of August and it doesn't look like it's going to happen in December. Uh, I think Adi regularly in that interview said it would be December. I saw another report that it would be 2024. We are just confused. We have no idea what's going to happen. Well, sir, let me come to you still on the issue of the petroleum industry, because Ufoma has said if we're going by allegations and corruption cases, um, then, of course, we might have to strike everyone off this list. But again, because of this, the urgency that is tied to this you know, oil and gas sector, should we not see some person, and I'm not saying that we need an angel from heaven, but someone who we think or that seemingly would be showing that they would be able to deal with the corruption in that system, including Mr. President. So, um, like Kufoma said, I think it's a good thing that um, they have separated gas from petroleum. I, I, I think it sort of like suggests this government will <clears throat> drive the gas agenda as an alternative source of energy for the nation. So that's good. But then when you appoint as your minister of state, um, Mr. Ekbo, whose previous um, appointment was director general of Aqua Bomb Democratic Forum, it, just, it doesn't show that you are serious or you want to do anything but pay lip service or, like you said, settle political favors. You know, considering how critical energy is and energy, energy security <laughs> is to us, and what we are dealing with now as Nigerians with the full subsidy, how do you put, you know, someone who has a, a look at NGO in a quiet bomb, you know, and no oil and gas experience as your minister of state for a sector as critical as gas? Even more worrying for me as a former militant from the Niger Delta. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, my ministry. What happened to my my Niger Delta ministry? Where did it go to? It's not. Oh, well, I, I have a quick answer for you because yeah. um, I think the IPAC national chairman uh, Yagabi Stani said something, and I'd like to quote him. He said that the sector, which is the Niger Delta mm -hmm. sector, has been made to look as if people sh um, that should be appointed to that ministry should come from the Niger Delta, and he says it's a wrong signal. In other words, it's not even that important. No, but the problem, you know, and we've been here before, you know, in in um, when Buhari came into power, if you recall, he suspended the amnesty program. He was totally against it. And we saw militants shut down all production in the Niger Delta. And it cost us millions of dollars at a time when we needed it most. If you remember, we we're just dipping. Um, the economy was slowing down at that time in 2015. And so how do you come in and... Everybody is agitating and you are actually showing, you might not be speaking it, but you are showing that you are continuing Buhari's principle of 97% and 5%. The Southeast, for instance, only have five ministers, four senior ministers, one minister of state. And you can, you you know the president, the president is signaling that, you know, this is because of the results I didn't get from the Southeast. And so if that is your position as president, why are you taking away a ministry as as critical to your energy security as the Niger Delta ministry. At the time where you need you actually need to be ramping up oil production, you are bringing doubt and uncertainty into that entire region. It, it makes no sense to me. I don't know why they did it. I think they'll reverse course, um, but we'll see. Um, I forgot to mention uh, something. There was a there's a there's a there's a dark horse minister, um, Dangawa. I think he's minister of housing. Um, he's he's a seasoned architect, and he was the I think the past MD of the Federal Mortgage Bank. One of the things we're suffering in Nigeria is a is a housing deficit, and I think this yeah. is the first time we're having someone who understands mortgage financing, who has a professional background in that Ministry of Housing. So I'm hoping, fingers crossed, I'm hoping that they can somehow make it easier for you and me to um, get more mortgages to buy houses. Mm -hmm. You, just to add, just to add, um, uh, Marianne, um, I, I'm not sure I totally agree with Osse on the Niger Delta ministry. Niger Delta. Okay. Um, yes. Are you I'm from the Niger Delta? Delta. Are you? I, yeah, <laughs> I know I'm, I most likely might get attacked, you know, from my quote unquote people. Um, but honestly, I feel that the Niger Delta ministry is 
it's just a duplication of duties. That's what I think. Um, you already have the ND, NDDC. Um, why, honestly, do you need a ministry um, for the Niger Delta? That's me. I honestly don't think um, we need it. I would say strengthen the agency you have already. Um, whatever, whatever that ministry can do, I honestly think you know can be uh, done by any other ministry. It can be put. You could you could even put it under the um, the new one that was created. Um, Marine and um, uh, blue economy. Blue economy. <laughs> <laughs> you, you know, um, I, but, I, wish, also, I wish we had more time because I wanted to also talk about the duplication of these ministries. And you know, for for one, we would think that because of where we are as a country, financially and economically, we would be shrinking some of these ministries, departments, and agencies. But we're absolutely. seeing more and more of these ones, uh, you know, being um, in introduced. Again, how are we going to be funding these ministries? Are we going to be seeing our budgets ballooning over time? Because I really, I'm trying to wrap my head around it. In closing, guys. So um, is, the, is, the, is, the, is the irony of it all for me? So oh, okay, go ahead. You, you are absolutely correct. You know, I started by saying this is the largest cabinet we've ever had um, at a time where we actually need to be cutting costs and shrinking government. Um, again, to my mind, politicians will do what's in their best interest. I think... Tinubu comes in with a minority mandate. He needs to build elite consensus. So I can understand the political thinking behind giving it out, giving out all these ministries. I can understand that. Okay. Hold on, quickly. Yeah, that, that is, it, yeah, it's uh, like I said, it's it's the irony for me. On one hand, subsidy is gone. You know, Nigerians are going through hard times. You're asking Nigerians to, you know, um, endure the hardship, you know, because it will get better very soon. On the other hand, the politicians will continue to take 70 billion um, allowance. You know, there's more ministries, there's more appointments, and the cost of governance is still expanding. I honestly don't get it and will never get it. But like Osa said, there is also a political angle to it. Almost everybody, mm. if you are in issues, will do exactly the same. Well, I want to say thank you, sir. Nene is a, the People's Democratic Party chieftain, and Ufo Magbamano is the head of news at Cool as Obia Info here in Lagos. Thank you so much, gentlemen, for being part of the conversation. Thanks for having us. Thank you for Great. having us. All right, we'll take a quick break. When we come back, we'll be talking about calls uh, and concerns in the reduction of pump price. Many are saying it should not be increased. Others are saying reduce it. Stay with us. We'll be right back after this.